Hello everybody and welcome to the 1960s. Uh, welcome to 1967 spa francorchamps circuit here in Belgium. As we go through the menacing Tet Rouge and Eau Rouge complex. Up the hill there and onto the uh, many, many slightly straight sections of this track in a 1967 Ferrari. Now we're currently in a 1967 Ferrari V12. And this car was not very successful in all honesty. It did manage to get Chris Amy a few a few third finish uh, sorry a few third places on the podium. But other than that it wasn't a very successful season. Uh, the car's just gone back to a bigger sort of engine regulation and there were a lot of changes in Formula 1 around this time. It was the time where Brabham and Lotus were effectively ruling with an iron fist and you had teams like BRM collapsing and falling into the wayside. You, it was a real change in the old guard, so to say. And Ferrari did get caught did get caught out in this. Now, 1967's an interesting period because it was really the last period where there was no aero on the car. And when we say there's no aero, just what we mean by that is they didn't have wings. So, as you'll know with modern Formula One cars, they tend to have little winglets and sections on them. for downforce to allow them to corner extremely fast and while in the 1960s this hadn't been discovered yet it was still a sort of novel idea to put a wing on a car putting even a gurney flap or something like that on a car was still a relatively new idea so aerodynamics were not sort of uh, at the forefront at this time period. Basically the idea of a fast Formula 1 car was getting the biggest engine you could, making it go as fast as you could, making it as loud as it could go, and then strapping it into the back of a monocoque vehicle like this, a very lightweight chassis, and then punching it through the air because, as I said, aerodynamics were not really much of a thing in this time period, but they did understand, you know, the sleekness of a car. You know, to make it like a bullet shape, to make it go as fast as possible, of course. We've learned that with planes by this stage, so I've kind of worked it out with cars, but we didn't have that whole downforce thing. So, you had some incredible top speed in these things, but it also meant you had some incredibly bad brakes, incredibly poor turning and incredibly poor handling cars which this is um, <laughs> to say the least driving one of these cars around the old version of the old version of Spa is a rather terrifying thing. So here we come onto our fast lap now. And we're going to come round, come down into the Turt Rouge and Eau Rouge corners. Definitely can't take it flat out. <laughs> Not like modern day spa where it is basically just a balls to the walls flat out experience this is a oh god I'm going to die experience and probably gonna end up crashing into the river experience now if you're looking for fast laps around these tracks in this era of car, I would recommend looking elsewhere because I am definitely not going to be setting 
setting Jim Clark as black times. Because one, I'm not ta as talented as Jim Clark. And two, even though this is a simulator, and I'm not actually going to die when I crash this car and be engulfed in flames, my brain is still telling me that I am going to die and be engulfed in flames in this car. Because it's a terrifying vehicle. Now, you have to remember, in 1960s, a fast road car was going around about 100 miles per hour. That was a very fast road car, you know, it's sort of average. Fast, sort of. Road vehicle. Your fast race car back then was going up to, you know, speeds of nearly 200 miles per hour. Often with things like drum brakes and cable brakes. On tracks where if you run a little bit wide, you're going to go into a house or a river or a big large concrete post. And as I said, you are basically in a coffin surrounded by fuel. This is why drivers didn't like to wear seatbelts at the time, because, well, basically you were better off in a crash without a seatbelt, because at least you'd be thrown clear of the, uh, uh, of the wreck and not die being burnt alive in a horrible fashion. The other thing about these cars, of course, is their tyres. Uh, as you will have noticed, they are not what you'd call slick tyres. They're not like the modern race tyre. They're not like the next car we're going to be going in, which is a slick racing tyre designed for ultimate grip when you're going around corners at high speeds. These tyres are basically designed to be, well, very, very quick at going in a straight line. When you actually want to turn a corner, however, you're basically relying on, well, a number of factors. Many of them are basically what you would call testicular sort of tendencies. Terrible exit in the corner there. You can see the lovely river to the side of us just there as well. So that's a lap of Spa Frankenshaw Classic in a 1967 Ferrari. <sighs> okay, so. We set a lap time of about four minutes flat there, which is not the best lap time in the world, not the greatest lap time, but I'll take it in this car. It's a terrifying experience. All right, let's head to our next vehicle. Okay, before we jump to the next car, we'll just quickly look over the uh, the stats of that car there. So the uh, 1967 version, the 31267, 548 kilograms, weighs absolutely nothing. 390 horsepower out of a V12, 1.41 kilograms per horsepower. Very, very fast car. Scary car at that. Terrifying car. So let's just go to our next vehicle, which is going to be the 2017 version of the Ferrari. Now, this is a very different beast. As you can see, we don't actually have the specifications for it, uh, but with the KERS system, these cars have over a thousand horsepower, and they still weigh barely anything. The big difference is the wings. Because of those wings, this car has grip. Now, how much grip will it have around the classic Spa? That's the question. So, the 2017 Ferrari wasn't as... Uh, well, as successful as hoped as well, it was a bit of an underachiever, it didn't get them the championship, things like that, so 
an interesting car to compare against, and we can see what 50 years of progress has done to motorsport. Okay, so here we are in the modern day equivalent of the uh, the 1950s, well, 1960s car, sorry. Now, one thing that we have in this car that you didn't have back in the 60s when Aero was invented was this little neat trick you can do with your rear wing. We'll get more to that in a moment. First of all, let's take her out for a lap. So, one thing of course you're going to notice in a modern Formula 1 car is you're missing 8 cylinders straight away. However, you've got quadruple the horsepower. Because engine technology has advanced so much. Now, the 2017 Ferrari was a bit of a disappointment for Ferrari in all honesty. It wasn't one of their best cars. Now saying that, it wasn't a terrible car. It was still a very good car, it still won races. But, as has been the issue with Ferrari through the last few seasons, they've had trouble getting a championship together. And that is where the uh, the difference between a fast car and a silly fast car becomes things. There's also things like reliability. Now, these modern F1 cars are almost bulletproof. Not completely, but they are getting there. Their engines have to last about six to eight races. They only get an allocation of, I think, four, four engine units now. So that's the actual main engine. Not talking about all the other fancy components, because you also get an allocation of them. Back in the 60s, that V8, that V12 Ferrari engine only had to last one race, and then it could grenade itself for all they care. The car was designed to sort of last a season, you could say, but lots of it was changed. The, the main thing that survived was the chassis. And they had to be thrown away as well, because generally chassis would get fatigued and start to break. Which is never a good thing to have happen to your car when you're going at 190 miles per hour, hurtling towards a house. Now you might be wondering why I've chosen cars to have a look at for technology advancements rather than other fields such as aviation and the main reason being is because I feel the biggest difference we've made in our in technology is with the Formula 1 car now coming down to Tet Rouge, No Rouge we're not suicidal, so we're not going to take them flat out. Get a bit of oversteer there, just coming up the hill. And almost go into a hay bale. Of course, hay bales used at this time period because there wasn't enough flammable stuff around the track to kill drivers. So we needed more flammable things to help try and thin the numbers of the F1 grid. Of course, modern F1 cars are much safer. Now, unfortunately, we have lost drivers. We lost Jules Bianchi a few years back. Um, a very unfortunate incident. Antoine Hubert last year in Formula 2 was lost. Again, through a pretty much a freak incident, unfortunately, at the Spa circuit. It's still not 100% safe, but it's getting there, damn it. But the biggest thing is just the speed. Now, we're going to open up our DRS, and we're going to push our fast button now. Now, we've just gone from 198, 199 miles an hour to 211 miles an hour in a flip of a button there.
and then we've got down to 180 miles per hour in a dab of the brake, not even a quarter of a second of a dab of the brake there. The big difference between cars is you can see the difference in the speed it goes and the speed it stops in. Now, unfortunately, tracks like this, although they are absolutely exhilarating to drive, and something of a, well, we are so lucky in our modern world that we can actually drive around these iconic historic circuits. They can't be used anymore. The cars are simply too fast. Now, even in the 1960s, this track was silly and dangerous. But to a modern F1 car, it just becomes a absolute stark raving mad mouth frothing badger that wants to gnaw your face off. Driving this track in a modern car is just absolutely insane. Very late braking there. Forget that. We won't. We'll just. We just don't notice the wall tap there. That's okay. <laughs> it just us a little bit of time, for sure. But these cars are just simply too fast for an environment like this. And the best way you can see that is as we crash out, as I was looking at the time, we're pretty much a second, fa well, sorry, we're pretty much one minute faster on that lap. Phew, okay. Let's, uh, let's just jump out of that. <laughs> so, that is Spa Francorchamps, and the difference between a fast car and a silly fast car. Um, we lost we lost a good three or four seconds in that final corner for sure, but much, much faster there um, than the 1967 variant of the car. Almost exactly, well, almost a minute faster. Um, easily, just so, so silly. And you can really see that with the cars. When we talk about the aerodynamics of a car, all of these weird little tails here, all these weird fins, they're all creating downforce, wash, drag, and they're all making this car go faster. Unfortunately, what's happened in modern F1 cars is because of all of this stuff, it creates a lot of dirty air. And dirty air means you can't follow a car. So when you're behind a car in front of you, another Formula One car for instance, you then lose a lot of your downforce, up to 40 to 50% of the downforce. And it's become more prevalent in more modern F1 cars. If we just go back and look at some of the other cars through history, uh, we'll just go back to the uh, 1970s. Um, so 1975 car, as you can see here, very air, very early aerodynamic and with these cars they were working into sort of things like ground effects stuff like that were becoming more of a thing but because there was less wash coming off because they were very simple wings you got a lot less drag and that made a real difference to the cars okay well i'm going to end it there so that's the difference between 50 years in motorsport that's what 50 years of motorsport has brought us one minute. Well, that one minute has taken me almost an hour to film because I kept bang, just kept losing it on those laps. Uh, so I do apologise for all the terrible, terrible uh, driving there. Not the best driving standards in all honesty. Um, but these cars are just, they're not made for that track. They just, it's very tricky. Unfortunately it is a custom track. Um, it's a mod track for a Seller Corso. Uh, of course we could drive the actual 
spa track uh, version of it but I wanted to go to the classic just to show you the sheer insanity that it used to be. Alright until next time this is me Carl Spreezilla out. Bye bye.